Hello and welcome to this tactical analysis of the Olympic Lyonnais versus Arsenal Women's Champions League match. We're going to look at how Olympic Lyonnais built up deep, trying to utilise their fullbacks and CDM, as well as also how Arsenal stopped their build up with their 4 4 2 press and Arsenal's focus on dynamism in their attack. And with that, we start off with this scenario in the 28th minute. First of all, we're looking at this 2 3 build up by Olympic Lyonnais. You've got Henri here as your CDM versus this 4 4 2 pressing shape from Arsenal. Olympic Lyonnais wanted to pass into their fullbacks with Henri coming onto the ball, utilising the space between the Arsenal wide midfielder and centre midfielder to pass into the likes of the number eight here in Van der Donk or the likes of Cayman dropping where Cayman would have tried to position herself between the centre back and fullback for Arsenal and then pulled back out into the space for Henri to play a through ball for her down the line. Alternatively, the centre backs such as Son Bath or Renard could step up and they could fire a pass between the lines into a forward. And then lastly, they also had the option before Henri became uh, the right-sided centre-back of Henri or Van der Donk moving into a right-back position, allowing Jorena to move higher up the pit. And then the one of either Henri or Van der Donk that wasn't in right-back would move into CDM. Okay, so here Arsenal have been able to kind of force Olympic Lyonnais further back. Henri is trying to get out of the shadow, the pressing shadow of Marnum. Marnum who made this 4-4-2 uh, sometimes look like a 4-4-1 where she would drop onto the CDM and make it difficult for Olympic Lyonnais to pass into her specifically. After retreating to the goalkeeper and coming back across, Sombath is trying to set up that move where the fullback receives it and then they pass it back into Henri who then looks to play it into the wide area for Cayman. On this occasion Marnum is tracking Sombath and so Black Stenius is the one trying to track Henri. Okay so he here, Henri didn't quite know just how close Black Stenius was and so other Arsenal forwards anticipate a turnover and are going to look to pounce. So we see that here in the anticipatory movements by both Ford and Mead who given their proximity to their fullback and the fact that they're already starting to get into a counter attacking position would allow them to hopefully get that extra yard of space. Unfortunately for Arsenal they're not able to take advantage of Mead or Ford because this was judged to be a foul. Speaking of, the referee promoted Arsenal's aggression by just permitting their physicality. We're looking at scenario in 36th minute specifically because it shows us how Arsenal built up versus the 4-1-4-1 press from Olympic Lyonnais. So we have the 2-4 shape from Arsenal or 2-4-1-3 because Marnham kind of operated just below the line of board, typically towards this left-hand side. We see the 4-1-4-1 with Henri as your CDM. Although this press changed um, in the second half with Olympic Lyonnais pushing it to more of a 4 one, three, two, to try and contest the central space. So initially, Olympic Lyonnais were able to force Arsenal back to their goalkeeper, but now what was a 4-1-4-1 press ends up a bit disjointed with Arsenal's defenders and midfield unit able to exploit this central space, which is why I presume Olympic Lyonnais moved to that 4-1-3-2 to contest this space. Even with that 4-1-3-2, uh, there's still that space um, either side of the CDM, which at this point uh, later in the game will be a great roller for Arsenal to exploit. As mentioned, we still have that 2-4 deep shape um, from Arsenal in the build-up. They exploit the space behind the midfield of Olympic Lyonnais as they look to try and put some pressure on that Arsenal defensive unit. But doesn't matter, Arsenal just lob the ball over that press into the likes of Marnham or the forwards such as um, Board or Mead dropping. Marnham especially liked to hang out in this space. This would allow her to be able to, to drive inside and combine with the likes of Black Stenis, who's looking to play on the shoulder, who wants to be released early. While Lyonnais were the champions of Europe last season, they obviously are depleted in this game um, and you could see that in how disjointed their defence and the midfield cover was. And so from the advantage that Arsenal got on this left-hand side, Ford is able to drive inside and looks to try and play the ball early for her other forwards um, in Beth Mead um, and Black Stinius. This sort of dynamism was the theme of the game for Arsenal. And looking at this scenario in the 81st minute, we're looking at what was was essentially a 3-1 from Olympic Lyonnais where their left back so initially Batcher but here Morini is the more attacking of the full backs and looks to try and combine in this left hand side base with the likes of Mallard and Horan or Le Sommet to try and create costing opportunities from this left
left hand side. Given that they moved Somma initially the right centre back into a right back position because Jorena was really struggling against Ford, they didn't have her um, maraud up this right hand side as much. Lemiglione's number eights, such as Horan um, or Van der Donk, would look to try and drop and present options for passes through the lines for the defensive unit. By this late stage in the game, it was against a 4 2 3 1 from Arsenal, and Lemiglione really struggled to create anything of note uh, with a lot of their attacks just breaking down due to miscommunication or some sort of dysfunction in their attacks. Okay, so we see here Olympic Linné kind of forced to retreat and here Henri, the right centre back since Jorena was subbed off, looked to break into the space ahead of her because the fact that Nobbs is playing as a cam in this 4-2-3-1 rather than as a centre forward presents Henri with this opportunity. And so here Henri finds the opportunity to be able to play a pass into Cayman coming in off that line and she's going to look to try and combine with her other forwards or with Le Sommet running to catch up with the play. Unfortunately, Cayman's pass doesn't connect here with Brun and Arsenal are able to clear and immediately Lyonnais look to counter-press to prevent Arsenal from being able to counter-attack through the likes of Nobbs or Hertig or Miedemar further up the pitch. This leads to an Arsenal throw-in, but Arsenal just throw it up the line and Olympic Lyonnais able to recover the ball. And so we see them look to recycle possession towards this left-hand side where there's space and then we're going to see that pattern where we have our number eights get into this space besides the centre midfielders for Arsenal. So at this point, Marnham and Little, and then look to try and combine with the fullback and wide midfielder in Mallard on this left hand side. Okay, so we see that here developing. We've got Lissomir as well as Horan looking to try and take advantage because Ubermoy can't really come out. She's got both of the players either side of her occupied by um, their Leon um, attackers. So here we've got Brune occupying Catley, and then near side we've got. Mallard occupying Wayne Reuter. So really, Rubemoy can't push out into the likes of Horan or Lusomer because that would leave none of her partners with any cover. And so the two look to take advantage of being blindside of Marnham and Little to drop and link with Renard. And then they're going to look to link in this wide left-hand side space. And so we see, similar to how Batcher was getting up, now Moroni is trying to do the same. And they're going to look to try and exploit this space here. However, what was a relatively simple pass here, uh, Moroni does doesn't control and the ball goes out for Arsenal and so the attack breaks down and then in the very next minute Olympic Lyonnais are looking to do the same looking to try and exploit this space here they've got all their um, attacking midfielders and their fullback looking to try and support try and overload this left hand side and again just a miscommunication or a little bit of a dysfunction here ends up with Mallard not anticipating or reading what a teammate is trying to do here and the ball just goes out for Arsenal throw. And with that thanks for watching if you've enjoyed this content please give it a thumbs up consider sharing on social media and subscribing. If you are particularly a fan of Arsenal, have a look at some of my WSL coverage or Women's Champions League analysis from last season. And with that, we're out.